Hello, everyone. Today, I'm presenting our paper, PIM, Scalable and Hardware Independent Firmware Testing via Automatic Peripheral Interface Modeling. This work is collaborated with my colleague, Alejandro Mira, and my advisor, Long Lu. Microcontroller, or MCU for short, is ubiquitous. It's a single chip computer that is widely used in embedded devices such as IoT, medical, or industry control devices. MCU becomes popular because of its rich functionality and low cost. In 2018, 28.1 billion MCUs are sold worldwide. Recent years have seen a growing number of MCU vulnerabilities. For example, in 2018, a buffer overflow vulnerability was found on free ATOS, which is a popular operating system for MCU devices. The vulnerability allows remote attackers to execute arbitrary code on the MCU. Actually, MCU vulnerabilities can cause not only digital damage, such as privacy leakage, but also physical damage, such as human injury. It's worthwhile to mention that most vulnerabilities are from firmware. So what is MCU firmware? MCU firmware contains the whole software stack of the MCU. It includes components such as application, library, operating system, and driver. Bugs can appear in any of its components. Fuzzing, as a dynamic analysis approach, is proven to be effective at finding bugs on desktop programs, as firmware has similar bugs to desktop programs. We test firmware with fuzzers. Firmware can be tested either on a device or emulator. However, because of limited resources on MCU, on-device fuzzing is not feasible. The other solution is testing firmware in an emulator. The emulator should emulate MCU components, including processor, peripheral, and the interface between the two. There are two types of interface, register and interrupt. It's worth noting that registers are defined by peripherals for IO purposes. They are not CPU registers. However, emulators do not emulate the peripherals because peripherals are diverse and hard to emulate. As a result, firmware cannot boot in the emulator. To solve the problem, multiple types of solutions have been proposed. The first type of solution is peripheral emulation, which emulates peripheral hardware by software components in the emulator. However, they can only provide incomplete support for peripherals. Besides, they require significant many efforts for each peripheral. The second line of work is hardware in the loop emulation. They use real peripheral hardware to handle peripheral access in the emulator. The limitation is because of using real hardware, the testing is slow and unscalable. The third line of work is partial emulation in which they replace peripheral dependent firmware code with software stops that implement the same functionalities. In this way, they don't have to emulate the peripherals. The limitation is they cannot test peripheral dependent code. Besides, significant manual effort is needed. To overcome the limitations of previous work, we set four design goals. The first goal is to make it automatic. Compared to the desktop program, there are a larger number of MCU devices need to be tested. However, firmware developers have less time and money budget for testing. With an automated solution, human efforts needed for testing can be minimized. The next goal is hardware independent, meaning that firmware is tested in the emulator and no real hardware is needed. This makes firmware testing faster and easier to automate. The third goal is peripheral agnostic. As peripherals are diverse, an effective approach is to handle them in a uniform way. Additionally, no extra effort is required for new peripherals. Last, a scalable solution can help to improve code coverage by running multiple further instances in parallel. To achieve our goals, we first observe the behavior of peripherals and interface. 
we found peripherals are diverse in terms of type and functionality, but interface is not. Based on our observation, we present a solution focusing on the interface instead of peripherals that existing solution do. Therefore, we don't need to emulate any peripherals. The key idea is we treat peripherals as black box and we abstract a model to uniformly handle register access and interrupt firing for a wide range of peripherals. Our solution can achieve all the design goals while the state of the art works can only achieve them partially. In our workflow, the first step is to model the interface so that the firmware can execute in the emulator and perform peripheral operations. Modeling the interface is not easy. We realize it's the peripheral that determines register value and interrupt firing timing. However, we consider peripherals as black box. So how to model the interface? In our solution, registers are categorized by their functionalities and handled accordingly. As for interrupts, they can be fired at any time. We fire the interrupts at a fixed frequency. To abstract model, we make many efforts, but it, on, it only needs to be done once for each MCU architecture. This slide shows the four register categories we define. After thoroughly analyzing MCU convention and documentation, we believe these four categories are representative and comprehensive. This hypothesis is confirmed with our evaluation. The next problem is given a firmware, how to identify the interface that needs to be modeled. In our work, registers used by the firmware are identified and categorized by monitoring access to the memory mapped peripheral region. For interrupts, they are detected by monitoring the interrupt controller. This is an automated process per firmware. After modeling the interface, the firmware can run in the emulator. The next step is to do fuzzing. In our framework, we integrate existing fuzzers without any modification. The inputs generated by fuzzers are fed into the firmware through the data register. Then crashing test cases are stored for further analysis to find bugs. The first experiment is to evaluate the effectiveness of our interface modeling mechanism. We collected 70 sample firmware to cover a wide range of essential peripheral operations, such as data transmission through USAT peripheral. In total, our test cases cover eight peripherals, three MCU, and three operating systems. According to the results, 79 test cases passed, meaning that the majority of firmware can boot and perform essential peripheral operations normally. In our work, registers are categorized and handled based on their categories. So it's very important to evaluate the accuracy of register categorization. In our results, the accuracy is between 76% and 92%, which is great. We also found accuracy is comparable on different peripherals, indicating our mechanism is peripheral agnostic. In a word, our solution works well for a large set of sample firmware. Those firmware can execute without any problem on an emulator that does not support MCU peripherals. We also fast tested 10 real world firmware. The firmware are from devices such as drone, robot, and etc. First, the accuracy of register categorization on real world firmware can reach to 100%. Second, the basic block coverage we achieved is up to 70%. Comparing to the vanilla emulator, which does not emulate any peripherals, the code coverage is improved as much as 30 times. In our fuzzing campaign, we detected seven unique bugs. All the bugs are previously unknown and remotely exploitable. We also reproduced all the bugs on real device to make sure they are not false positives introduced by our interface modeling mechanism. In summary, we propose PIM, 
the first scalable and hardware independent firmware testing framework. In our framework, we design and implement a novel interface modeling mechanism. We first tested 10 real world firmware and found seven previous, previously unknown vulnerabilities. If you are interested, please check out our code and test the firmware at GitHub. Thanks for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions.